In the last video, we discussed sources of carbon dioxide in wastewater treatment plants. In this video, we will be focusing on a more prominent gas within this context, methane. A little background on methane first. Like we mentioned in the first video of this series, methane is a more potent and concerning greenhouse gas since it has a warming potential 25 times greater than that of carbon dioxide. Methane emissions in the wastewater sector are becoming a huge problem. Again, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's guidelines for methane emission approximations underestimate the true magnitude of the issue, since they were developed from limited measurements at a small number of wastewater treatment plants. Researchers at Princeton University measured the plumes of 63 treatment plants on the East Coast and concluded that municipal wastewater treatment plants emit nearly double the amount of methane into the atmosphere than IPPC scientists previously believed, equating to 5.1 megatons of CO2 equivalent in current inventories. Another study finds that the overall annual methane emissions from the entire wastewater sector in the U.S. are approximately 10.9 plus or minus 7 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent. For the majority of these plants, Direct CH4 emissions alone can account for up to 79% of the Scope 1 emissions and up to 57% of the total carbon footprint. Cumulatively, the wastewater sector contributes 5-8% to of global anthropogenic CH4 emissions, just following livestock, oil and gas, landfills, and coal mining. A question that arises here is, where exactly does methane come from in the wastewater collection and treatment process? The answer is less straightforward than that of carbon dioxide. To answer, let's first explain how methane can be produced in general. In the context of these videos, methane is produced in anaerobic environments, or environments that lack oxygen, where bacteria and microorganisms undergo anaerobic fermentation. Anaerobic fermentation is a natural biological process that occurs in the absence of oxygen, where complex organic compounds present in the wastewater are gradually converted into simpler compounds, including methane gas as one of the byproducts. In wastewater systems, anaerobic conditions that result in methane production vary depending on configurations. Today, we will be focusing on two common places that this process occurs, in the sewers and during sludge stabilization. The IPCC attempts to underestimate the contributions of sewer systems on the emissions profile of the wastewater sector as a whole. A 2021 study measured the total methane emissions from ground covers of the sewer network in Paris, France, to be 62,700 kilograms of CH4 a year, accounting for 33% of total detectable emissions from the ground, the second greatest contributor after natural gas distribution systems. The pathways through which methane formation occurs in sewers are as follows. Large amounts of methane generated from biological activity from degrading organic compounds in anaerobic conditions occur in the liquid phase of the sewer system, with the possibility of the methane being supersaturated, which means that the sewage contains more than the maximum amount of methane that is capable of being dissolved at a given temperature. Then, when the sewage is discharged to a vessel that is open to the atmosphere, like the screens or the primary settler, which receive wastewater directly from the sewers, the methane will want to escape from the liquid phase sewage to reach a new equilibrium due to the low methane concentrations in the atmosphere. Dissolved methane concentrations in sewer networks differ based on wastewater temperature, geographical location, and hydraulic retention time. Typically, urban areas rely on gravity sewer systems for their wastewater management, where underground pipes with a slight slope facilitate the flow of sewage downhill. The U.S., for example, has a network of over 800,000 miles of public sewers, in which 92.5% are gravity sewers. One meta-analysis found that dissolved methane concentrations are the highest in gravity systems, with 5.6 mg of methane per liter of wastewater. Longer hydraulic retention times, which is the average amount of time that wastewater remains in the sewer, leads to more anaerobic conditions and better growth of methanogens, resulting in greater methane production. Another notable source of methane emissions in the wastewater treatment process is anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digestion is an extension of the activated sludge aeration process, in which primary and secondary waste sludge undergo continuous aeration over extended periods of time. Primary sludge typically consists of settleable solids that are filtered out of the wastewater during the early stages of the treatment process. On the other hand, secondary sludge is generated during the biological treatment stage, 
and primarily consists of excess microorganisms and residual organic matter. The goal is to transform the sludge into biologically stable inorganic matter and volatile solids. This transformed sludge is known as digested sludge, and biogas is generated from the organic matter that was previously in it, which can then be used for heat and electricity production. While anaerobic digestion being integrated into a wastewater treatment facility is beneficial for energy recovery and minimization, the downside is that it releases a lot of fugitive methane emissions into the atmosphere. An IWA study from 2005 details two possible exit mechanisms. Firstly, methane is found in the effluent, or output, of anaerobic digester reactors. Since the diffusion of methane is relatively high and its solubility in water is relatively low, it can be stripped easily through either a stripping chamber after anaerobic digestion or air diffusion. It can also come out through bubbles that rise directly from the sediments or unintentionally through the headspace of a reactor vessel. Another, more recent IWA study from 2019 reported that over 50% of the methane emitted from the anaerobic digestion of sludge comes from the residual gas potential of the digested sludge which is when it continues to diffuse dissolved methane into the atmosphere for an additional stabilization period of 10 days. Finally, methane can be released unintentionally in anaerobic digestion processes through the leakage of produced biogas. Cracks in the infrastructure, loose pipe connections, and malfunctioning pressure release systems can result in as much as 7.5% average methane loss from escaped biogas. If we consider that the average U.S. wastewater treatment plant's sludge digesters produce 0.9 to 1.1 liters of biogas per day, with a methane yield of about 50 to 70 percent, approximately 45 milliliters of methane are leaked into the atmosphere every day, or around 16.3 liters a year. That might not seem like a lot on its own, but in combination with other sources of fugitive methane emissions, it has a significant impact on global warming. Cumulatively, there are many different elusive opportunities for methane to escape into the atmosphere during anaerobic digestion, undermining what is meant to be an environmentally conscious operation. In fact, up to 26% of the carbon footprint of an entire wastewater treatment plant can be attributed to methane emissions from anaerobic sludge treatment, while only a maximum of 17% of the total carbon footprint could be compensated for by using the produced biogas as an energy source, according to a study conducted by researchers at the Vienna University of Technology. Additionally, a 2017 study finds that over 75% of climate-relevant emissions from wastewater treatment plants originate from methane emissions from sludge treatment, in which 94% arise through digested sludge. When we think about mitigating emissions in this context, we often think of a two-fold approach, prevention and reutilization. Anaerobic digestion-related emissions teach us an important lesson about looking at the full picture when it comes to reutilization efforts. It is crucial to pay attention to details, as failure to do so may inadvertently cause more harm than good. A meta-analysis with 101 measurements from the literature concerning various wastewater treatment plants around the world revealed that plants operating with anaerobic digestion had methane emissions that were over three times higher than those of plants without this process. Hence, while anaerobic digestion operations can offset greenhouse gas emissions associated with carbon-heavy grid electricity, like we mentioned in the last video when we discussed energy self-sufficiency, fugitive emissions can complicate these net benefits, and therefore more research in this area is required to achieve a desirable outcome. In conclusion, methane is a potent greenhouse gas that is released into the atmosphere from wastewater treatment facilities. Two primary sources of methane emissions in wastewater treatment plants are fugitive emissions from the sewer system and anaerobic digestion processes. In the sewer system, methane can escape through supersaturated sewage when discharged into an open vessel or due to poor ceilings. In anaerobic digestion, methane is released through the effluent, residual gas potential, and biogas leakage. These emissions pose a significant challenge to environmental sustainability efforts as they contribute to global warming. While anaerobic digestion can decrease energy-related emissions by producing biogas, unintentional methane emissions can defeat the purpose. Therefore, a comprehensive approach to reutilization is crucial in mitigating methane emissions and minimizing the environmental impact of wastewater treatment plants as a whole.